Hi, Todd Dunn here on August 21st, 2018. It's about 7 p.m. and I'm aboard my 1936 wooden powerboat Tortuga because I want to talk about boats. Specifically, tonight I'm going to be talking about repowering a cruising sailboat from diesel to electric and specifically some of the limitations I see particularly if the sailboat is going to be used as a cruising sailboat or a liveaboard. Okay, the first thing that we need to consider when we're going to repower any boat is how much power do we need to move the boat. In naval architecture, there are some very complex formulas that you can use to calculate exactly how much power you need to move a boat. However, there are also some relatively simple formulas that will give you a pretty good estimate within 10% or so, uh, particularly for full displacement hull forms like most sailboats. Those formulas have three variables in almost every case. And those variables are the waterline length of the hull, the displacement of the boat, how much it weighs, and the speed, usually given in knots or nautical miles per hour. Now what I have done to get an estimate of how much power you might need to move a sailboat is to use one of these formulas, specifically the Wyman formula, to calculate the power requirements for a couple of different sailboats. The sailboats I chose are a Catalina 30, which is a 30-foot sailboat with a 25-foot waterline length and a 10,200-pound displacement, and a Falmouth Cutter 22, which is a 22-foot sailboat with a 21-foot 10-inch waterline length and a displacement of 7,400 pounds. Why did I choose those two? Well, the Catalina is a sort of typical, somewhat more modern design, fin keel, spade rudder, etc. And the Falmouth Cutter 22 is a boat that I just happened to see a YouTube video about in which it seems that the people who have just acquired the boat are planning to repower it with electric and use it as a cruising boat. This graph shows the results of power calculations for a Falmouth Cutter 22 and a Catalina 30. The results are plotted as power required to move the boat expressed in kilowatts versus speed. And I did the calculations from 2 to 6 knots uh, on the grounds that you probably aren't going to want to go any slower than 2 knots and six knots for this size boat is getting very close to the hull speed which is in the 6.2 to 6.5 range for these two boats. And if you go above hull speed the power requirement goes up dramatically. So that's a pretty reasonable range of powers that we might want to consider. Now let's look right in the middle of the power curve and you'll see that both boats need approximately four kilowatts to go four knots. The Falmouth Cutter, because of its lower displacement, requires a little bit less. It came in at about 3.8 kilowatts, and the Catalina 30 comes in at about 3.9. But remember, this formula is only plus or minus about 10%, so for reasons of simplicity, I'm just going to round off to four kilowatts. Now, is it possible to generate four kilowatts from an electric motor? Absolutely. No problem at all finding an electric motor with a 6, 10, 20 kilowatt output. What about getting the electricity for the motor? Well, you have two options. One is generators. If you have a big enough generator, you can run the motor directly from the generator. And certainly, you can always find a big enough generator. The other option is batteries. If you put in enough batteries with enough capacity, 4 kilowatts isn't a problem. But the critical thing there is enough batteries. If you're going lead-acid, 
you need to have at least double the capacity of the amount you expect to draw the batteries down. So if you want to be able to motor for one hour with one of the boats I mentioned, consuming four kilowatts of power, your battery capacity should be at least eight kilowatts. So that's about seven Group 27 lead acid batteries. What happens after you run the engine for an hour and use up that four kilowatts of battery capacity? Well, you're going to have to recharge the batteries. You've got three options as I see it. First off, you could take the boat someplace and plug it into the electric power grid and recharge off the grid. The second option is to have a generator on board the boat that you fire up and charge the batteries. And the third option is to go with renewable power. That means for a boat, either wind or solar. Wind generators are one option, but for a small sailboat, the upper limit of wind generator capacity is probably in the 500 to 750 watt range. And four kilowatts is going to require anywhere from about six to eight hours of full output, which is unlikely unless you've got an awfully windy day. Also, wind generators are noisy and, in my experience, not very pleasant to be around. So maybe you don't want a wind generator. What about solar? Well, solar is a little bit more complicated to set up appropriately, but it has the advantage that once you get it set up, it's silent. As a matter of fact, my solar is working right now on this boat and it doesn't make it sound. It's maintenance free most of the time and quite reliable as long as the sun comes up every day. But there are some limitations. If you look at typical solar panels, the output of solar panels is about 15 to 17 watts per square foot of panel area. So if you want to be able to produce a kilowatt of power, you're going to need about 70 square feet of solar panels. This boat that I'm on right now would be perfect for that. It has a 15 and a half foot by six and a half foot wide cabin top that is completely unshaded and that would accommodate 70 square feet of solar quite easily. But on a sailboat, to get that much solar, a kilowatt of solar, it's going to be a lot more difficult because of one big factor, shade. Shade is your enemy with solar panels. And sailboats have these things called masts, and they have booms, and they have shrouds and stays, and lots of lines, and all of those cause shade. And it's essentially impossible on a monohull sailboat to put solar panels somewhere where they will not be shaded part of the time. That's particularly true if the boat is on a mooring or is anchored and is free to move with shifts in the wind and tide. Over the course of a day, as the wind and tide cause the boat's orientation to change, solar panels are going to be partly shaded for sure. And that's going to decrease output. So let's think a little bit about recharging strictly from solar, which is what a lot of people seem to think they're going to be able to do when they're using electrical propulsion. I'm going to use my four kilowatts for an hour of motoring at four knots as an example. If you went slower, it would be less power. If you go faster, it would be quite a bit more. But Four kilo, four, but four kilowatts for four knots for the smallish sailboats is a good starting point. So, if we're going to recharge the batteries after running for an hour and consuming four kilowatt hours, how much power do we have to put back in? Four kilowatts? Well, unfortunately, the answer to that is no, because of several reasons. One. Electric motors are not 100% efficient. 
there are bearings between, on the propeller shaft between the electric motor and the propeller. Charging is not 100% efficient, although it gets pretty close with lithium iron phosphate batteries. And solar systems themselves are not 100% efficient. They consume a little power to run the electronics. And finally, how your solar panels are mounted is going to be a factor. If you mount your panels horizontally, fixed mounts, on the boat, you're going to lose somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 percent of the solar input. In other words, if you have a 100 watt panel, your output is probably never going to be above 90 watts. So if we add all these factors together, what it says is you're going to have to put in somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 percent more power than you took out in order to recharge your batteries. So if you used four kilowatts of power to move the boat, you're probably going to have to put in approximately five kilowatts to recharge the batteries. So how much solar does that take? Well, as I said earlier, typically your solar panels are going to produce 15 to 17 watts per square foot. But you can't just say, okay, 5,000 watts divided by 15 for a worst case, because that would assume that you were only getting one hour of solar charging a day. And that isn't the case. In most places, on a completely cloudless day with bright sun all day, you're going to get somewhere between five and seven full solar hours. A full solar hour is an hour during which the solar panel puts out 100% of its output for the full hour. Now average over the course of a day because of the sun angle and sun intensity varying with sun angle, what it works out to is you get five to seven full solar hours per day from a typical solar panel. So if we had a 100 watt solar panel, we could expect to produce somewhere between 500 and 700 watts of power from it on a completely cloudless day with bright sun all day. In order to put 5 kilowatts back into the batteries, well, it's pretty obvious, 5,000 divided by, let's say, 600 is eight and a half days. So if you had a 100 watt solar panel, it's going to take you about eight and a half days to recharge your batteries after a one hour run at four knots. And that's assuming you don't use any electrical power for anything else on the boat. No charging your phone, no charging your camera batteries, no turning the lights on, no running the bilge pump, no radios, nothing. And of course, that's not going to happen. So let's be a little bit more realistic. You're probably going to want more than one solar panel. If you want to be able to recharge in one day, if it takes eight and a half days with one 100 watt panel, you're probably going to want about 850 to 900 watts of solar to recharge in one day. But that's on a full Sunday with no clouds at all. And as I'm sure you all know, now and then it's cloudy. Sometimes it even rains. Overcast days with rain will cut your solar output by 75-80%. So if you want to be able to put 5 kilowatts of energy back into your batteries every day, you're probably going to need something around 2 kilowatts of solar panels. And even then, there'll be cloudy, rainy days where you won't get that 5 kilowatt goal. How big is a 2 kilowatt solar array? Well, at 15 to 17 watts per square foot of solar panel, that is approximately 140 square feet of solar panels. That's a lot of solar panels, and a small sailboat simply doesn't have 
room for that much solar. You might get away with, say, 200 watts of solar. Maybe if you're really inventive, you might get away with 400 watts of solar on a Falmouth Cutter 22 or a Catalina 30. But that solar is going to be partly shaded during the day, so its effective output will be less. So what it boils down to is, if you're going to use solar to power your boat exclusively and use that same solar for propulsion via an electric motor, for a small sailboat, you simply do not have room on the boat to put in enough solar panels to do the job. You won't be able to run on a daily basis for even one hour a day at four knots. Sure, you could run at two knots, which maybe takes 500 watts per hour, but two knots is really slow. If you've ever motored along at two knots, you'll get pretty frustrated trying to go anyplace. And if there's any current, you'll find in many cases that you'll be going backwards if you're making two knots through the water. So I would say, you know, four knots is a pretty reasonable minimum speed that you want to be able to target for. And that just takes too much power to replace the power that's consumed by even one hour of motoring in a day on a small sailboat, simply because there isn't room for a big enough solar array. In addition, if you set your boat up so that you actually have electrical components on board. You have LED lights, you have charging for your phone, your camera, maybe your computer, you have a fan maybe, you have, in one case I heard somebody talk about using an induction cooktop, uh, you have refrigeration, you're going to have to add in probably in the neighborhood of five, six hundred, maybe even a kilowatt more power usage that you're going to have to replace every day. Now that power usage alone would be a challenge to replace with only one or two hundred watts of solar. And frankly, switching to an all-electric boat with only solar as a charging mechanism just isn't going to work. You might barely be able to keep up with normal usage if you have refrigeration, but it's going to be tight and you're going to have to be careful and there will be days when you will fall behind and if you have a week of cloudy weather or like we did here in Maine a couple of weeks ago we had 10 days in a row of fog, your solar output is going to be way way down and you're going to fall behind and your batteries are going to go flat and that's it. That'll damage your batteries, even lithium iron phosphate batteries. And you won't be able to do anything when the batteries are flat. You won't be able to turn the light on, turn the fan on. If you have an induction cooktop, you won't be able to cook. There are many, many things that simply won't happen if you don't have enough solar. And as I said, on a small sailboat, there just isn't room for enough solar particularly if you're thinking about electric propulsion. Okay, thanks for listening. I hope I made my point and got my skepticism about switching a small sailboat from a diesel engine to an electric motor and then attempting to power it completely with solar. And if you agree with me or just think that I made my point well, give me the old thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to get notifications about uh, when future videos on this and my other topics of interest are coming out. And thanks again for watching.